from a professional soccer career to becoming a driving force in the mortgage industry. Brian Covey has shown what it takes to find your competitive edge, get off the sidelines, and get in the game. Find your competitive edge with Brian Covey. What's happening, guys? And this is another episode of Finding Your Competitive Edge. It's a little different today, so it's just going to be me and you talking about what I actually learned this week with one of our podcast guests. We had Whitney Breer on, and I'll tell you guys, if you've ever heard the term resilience, resiliency, and you really weren't sure what that meant, or you've heard it coined, it's one of those words, I think in our, in our day and age, it's been used a lot, and, and many times out of context, right? You think about where resilience was first tested, it was actually in materials. If you're an outdoor equipment type person, you may think about jackets and equipment. If you're hiking up through the mountains or you're using equipment that you would need in cold temperatures or somewhere that you wouldn't normally go, you need equipment that's resilient. And that's where it's really started. But we started talking about a study that was done that some of you may be familiar with, but, but I wasn't that much. And it was from Emmy Warner in 1995 and really talking about the psychology of resiliency. You see, for many of us, we probably have a story in our own life. And, and I know I, I default back to college. And, and for each of you, you probably have a story that you look and go, hey, Brian, I, I faced this addiction or I had this hardship in my life. Uh, maybe I faced this car crash, which I did in the sixth grade. And there's stories of where you came back and you were able to overcome some unforeseen circumstance, something that it was just not in the cards for where you were. Let's dive into what resiliency is and what it isn't in just a minute. You see, my freshman year of college, I was able to start for our college soccer team. Amazing year. We had, I think, starting the year, five shutouts and got interviewed by the local TV and all this stuff. Our team's on a roll. We're playing exceptionally well. Make it to the conference finals. We're playing University of South Florida. I'll never forget down in Tampa. And at the end of the game, we are losing. And I decide we're going to come on up, right? And so I'm the goalkeeper and I'm coming up. We're putting the pressure on. We're trying to find that goal uh, to tie it up and to, to make sure that we can actually move on into overtime. And as I'm coming back, running down the field after we'd had a play down in the other box, running backwards and, and my knees, I'm going backwards, hyperextends. It kind of feels weird, right? It's like, that didn't feel right. What's happening there? Well, sure enough, I had torn my ACL. So last game of the season, trying to finish the game. And I am able to, but barely able to kick the ball. I remember having to ask some of the players, hey, can you take that goal kick? Like, I don't think I can kick the ball. So I finish out the game afterwards, obviously over the night, my knees swelling up only to face going home to the hotel, flying back home, getting back to Memphis and having to start really not what I had wanted, but go have surgery, get my knee checked out, start all the rehab and all of the things. And what would end up being almost a nine month journey to get back just in time for the season to start back up my sophomore year. So I'll have to say, I know a lot about resiliency in different areas of my life, but that one sticks out to me. And the reason why I share that with you is many of us have a dream and along in that dream early on, things might be going well, but then when we get hit or we run into a brick wall, how resilient are you? Do you get back up? Do you learn the lesson? Do you figure out the things that you need to and do you keep moving forward? And so I'm always interested in what is the psychology of this world word resiliency. And so I looked this up on the research and it says this research on psychological resilience has shown that it plays a crucial role in promoting mental health and well-being. Resilient individuals are better equipped to navigate through life's challenges, maintain positive emotions and recover from setbacks effectively. I don't know about you, but that's who I want to be better equipped to navigate through life's challenges. Yeah, sign me up for that. Two, maintain positive emotions. How many times do you see people's emotions and their feelings get in the way of what they know they need to do and keep them on the sideline? And number three, recover from a setback more effectively. Like I want to be in that camp. So as I'm listening to Whitney this week and she's sharing all the psychology and all the things there and you know, her book is Leadership Starts With You and I'm thinking about the way resiliency has been used a lot. And for many of us, we might think of resiliency as just it's a one-time event. Like I shared my story with you if that happened. But really what I would ask you to consider is resiliency is a belief system. It's a mindset. It is the psychology in which when you're faced with an obstacle, what is your first reaction? And we hear about fight, flight, freeze. 
Do you want to jump in the fight? Are you ready to go? Are you ready to take on everything? Sometimes prematurely. Do you, do you want to basically think about this and go, okay, I'm going to run away from it and I'm going to have the flight. Like, I don't want anything to do with that problem, man. I, I'm just going to get out of this situation. I'm going to go the completely opposite direction. I'm going to quit this. I'm just, I'm out. Do you freeze? Third option, you just kind of sit paralysis, not sure what to do, asking so many other people, what would you do? What would you do? And yet weeks and months go by and you haven't made a decision. You see, resiliency, as I've come to study, and this week was a great reminder, is resilient people are the ones that recognize life gets easier when you stop waiting for life to get easier. Life gets easier when you stop waiting for it to be easy. And you recognize that you're going to have setbacks, that you're going to have things that don't go your way. You're going to have things every day that you wish they had gone this way or that way a little bit different. But how you operate through with a positive mindset, a growth mindset, and how you actually exercise the muscle of resiliency is how you learn to be more resilient. It's just like a great soccer player. How you learn to pass the ball, your first touch, how to see the game, it's studying, it's practicing, it's playing, it's doing the fitness side of things. You have to put it into practice. It's one thing to read about it. It's one thing to see other people do it. It's a whole nother ball game when you start to exercise it yourself. So my challenge for you this week, as you listen to this, where in your life do you need to up your resiliency? Where is it? Do you need to make a decision? Remember, a decision is to cut something out, cut something off, to actually kill off so you can move forward. Where do you need to be more resilient? And the second part of that is I want you to think back to a time. And it's probably already come to you as you listen to this. When have you been successful in your own life of being resilient? You see, we can pull lessons from that. We can pull the emotions and the feelings and what we did and the actions, who was around us. How did we navigate through it? You see, that's how we learn. That's how we get better. And so the challenge is for you this week. Take those two things of where do you need to be more resilient and pulling strength from when you've actually exercised this and start to put this into practice. Hope this has helped you guys. We're going to be downloading each of these podcast episodes in little mini formats because I want you to take some of the information that you've learned and how I'm actually applying that myself and looking at my own life and how we can grow together. That's how we create great community. That's how we learn together and it accelerates our growth. Guys, make sure you like, subscribe, leave a comment, let us know anything that you would like to see more of. This is how this show was actually created, by the way. And make sure you go online and find our book, Conversations with Kovi. Make sure you get a copy of that. And then last but not least, many of you have reached out. We've got our free brand call with my partners over there, Brand Builders. We love them. If you or somebody is looking to up your brand, to get more well-known, to attract better clients, and really get a clarity of your message, you need to sign up for the free brand call and find out if it's the right fit. So guys, thanks for tuning in. Catch you on the next episode. Okay.